it this morning. Lord, make me clean. Lord, make me clean. And you see, it starts with me, y'all. Even though I'm standing up here, it starts with me. I had a conversation with a young man this week. And, and he calls me Miss Ann. He said, Miss Ann, I've just been trying. I've been trying to do right. I've been trying to be a better person. I've been, I've been I've trying to stop this. He said, they just don't laugh. I said, where have you been? You can't clean yourself up. I said, now you need to make a step. <coughs> you need to stop what you're doing. And <coughs> ask God to clean you up. Ask God to help you. Tell God your heart desires. Lord, I want to stop lying. Lord, I want to stop smoking. Lord, I want to stop. I want to be a better person. I want to be a Christian. That's all I'm saying. In my heart. I want. I said, and then when you get sincere with God, and you make an effort to do better, then God will help you. He will do the cleaning. You come to Him with your heart desire. And he would do the cleaning. And that message is for us today. Ask God to make you clean. And he'll do it. He will do it. We're going to go into the scripture this morning. Matthew 23. And we're going to start. It's a very short lesson today. Uh, at the 25th verse. I'm going to read the 25th. Matthew 23, 25 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. There are some word, key words in there. Woe. That's a warning. Hypocrites. Declaring you something you're not. Extortion and excess. A warning to the people of God that claim to be people of God because it went on to say you hypocrites scribes and Pharisees know the law proclaim the law by the law I'm saved by the law I'm religious but walking in the kingdom full of distortion lies, cheating and in excess of it so you teach the law and how you got to act, but you're not living. And the scripture says, woe unto you. Cleaning the outside of the cup and not the inside. So I was drinking coffee this morning and I made sure I got a clean cup. And me, my cups are up in the cabinet. Covered some people call them. But I still will get that cup or that glass down. And I'm going to run it under some water. To win. Even though the cup turned upside down, I'm still going to rinse it out. Because I don't want nothing affecting the taste of my coffee. See, if you got a cup and you just making sure it's clean outside, all kind of germs inside, you don't never wash it. If you don't use the, the same cup that Courtney was drinking coffee out of last night, if I say, oh, she's my child, she don't have no germs, let me just use this cup I want to wash dishes twice. I want to wash Got that cup and all kind of slob and stuff from Courtney's mouth is in that cup. And, and germs are in that cup, even though 
it looked clean on the outside. I would have been drinking, I don't know what it's called in that cup overnight. Because it was just sitting there. Same way with some of our lives. Y'all looking pretty today. Dressed up. A bouquet of flowers. But did you take a bath this morning? We make sure our outer appearance is on point. But the inside is filthy. Full of crud. Full of deceit. Full of lies. Because we refuse to walk the walk. But you think, oh, he's sitting on the front seat, he must be saying. She's sitting in the back, so I know she ain't saying. You don't know nothing. You can't see inside a person's heart. Stop judging. I'm not judging. I'm telling you what the scripture says. Woe, warning of destruction, of danger. When you make sure your outer appearance is on point and don't care about your inner. And how do I know? Because I see some real dressed up people. They got a nasty attitude. Come on now. But they'll beat you in the church. No, no, no. And they'll want to sit on the front pew. Like they are so saved. Woe unto you. Ask the Lord to wash you. Ask the Lord to make you clean. So you can get it right. You are profiting nothing for your own soul if you're not making sure it's clean on the inside. Amen? Amen. Verse 26 says, Thy blind Pharisees clean first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So before you go buy that nice dress, that nice pretty suit, and them shoes to match, before you go spend money on that, how about repenting? How about cleaning out the inside? And guess what? You can go in the back of your closet and get that outfit that you had last year. Once the outside is clean, It'll be dressed up inside, outside. You'll be dressed up outside. Because what's on your heart is going to shine forth. And when you come in the door, good morning, saints. Good morning. Everybody having a good day? Amen. But when you coming in, good morning. Morning. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What's so good about the morning? Filthy inside, but you show sharp outside. It doesn't profit you nothing. And the scripture says, Woe unto you. But you become cleaning up the inside first. I was I was going through the closet this morning, I was trying to find a black skirt. I had one of mine that I wanted. I couldn't find that skirt. I mean I looked, I looked, I looked. I couldn't find that skirt. I said, well, let me, let me try this one. I had it on in a while. And guess what? It fit. I was able to back it out. Clean yourself or have the Lord clean you inside. And I, I think I looked all right this morning when I came. I had on my pink top for breast cancer awareness. And I, I wanted a black skirt with it. That didn't work out what I thought, what I had in mind. Sometimes you got to deny yourself and let the Lord lead you where you need to go. Worry about the inside. Who am I? Am I representing Christ today? If you are, then your heart is in the right place. 
and your attitude will match. That outside will be okay. It doesn't matter what color you got on, pink or you know whatever, because it would your pleasant personality will come through. But the inside sometimes we are so selfish. We don't care. We, we lack compassion for anybody else. That's fear. I want what I want when I want it. That's that filthy inside of the cup that you're not trying to stop. Some people are happy being grouchy. Some people are happy complaining. They're happy whining. But who wants to be around a person like that? How are you going to draw people to Christ? How are you going to lift people up and say, God do it? When your attitude stank. Your personality stank. Woe unto you. How about asking God to make you clean? Make you clean. Psalms 51, somewhere over there, 7. Purge me with hyssop. Lord, wash me. I know I'll be clean if you wash me. Ask the Lord to make you clean. When he wash you, okay. you wash. And, and, and that's the other thing I told that young man. He said, well, people said, they be talking about me. I said, so? Let it be a lie. Don't let it be true. And just because they say it, don't mean it's who you are. God is able to do a wonderful work in changing people. I said, baby, I ain't been saved all my life. But I thank God that before it was too late, I asked him, I asked him to make me clean. And then I started studying, praying, and reading, I made the step. You've got to make a step so that God knows you're sincere and you really want this thing. He has no respect to person. He'll make you clean. He'll help you. Verse 27, I'm going to read 27 and 28 together, and I'm going to be through. Those are going to testimony. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like the whited sepulchre, which indeed appear beautiful outside, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe! 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 Woe unto you! And then he compared it to a, a grave. You've seen, you've passed by a cemetery and seen these big monuments, all whitewashed, you know, beautiful marble. He said, you, you appear like that. But inside, what's inside that tombstone? A dead person. And if you're dead, you're not growing, you're not living, you're not lively, you're not producing any fruit. And that's the way you are in the church today. You look like a Christian. You look like you say. You may even act like you say. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. But on the inside, there is no joy. There is no life. Because you feel it. And as we talked about in Sunday school this morning, Joshua told the people, choose ye. Because you cannot serve God and serve the other gods too. You can't do it. So you need to choose. But instead of choosing, we pretend. We pretend because the pastor don't know what I did last night. The pastor don't have to know. 
But if God give him discernment, he will know. And you better watch it. He may call you out. But how do you feel dressed up, sitting in the middle of the church, and don't feel no joy? Can't feel the spirit nowhere. Don't know what the message is about because you ain't studied nobody's scripture. Dead. No life. It profits you nothing. Because you'll be living in hell right here and then die and go to hell. Die and go to hell. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. I may think you live right. Oh, that's a Christian right there. Oh, that's, that's you fooling me. But I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. I can't help you. I can't get saved for you. I can't give you no religion. <coughs> Unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Sin. 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 Who have fooled you? <laughs> Who has fooled you? Now I want to tell you, you know, we, we already said that you can't clean yourself. But I want to tell you about a, a testimony I heard back in the spring from Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike from Birmingham, Alabama is a um, famous gospel singer. And I was, uh, I, I can't quote his testimony like he said, but the gist was he wanted to pursue singing. He was Pastor Mike, but he wanted to be singer Mike. He wanted to be a gospel singer. And God told him, stay where you are and stop chasing. And in 10 years, people are going to be chasing you. And he testified it came true. He, This was an award show I saw him on, and he won several awards that night for what he has done in the gospel music industry. And and I did not enjoy that award show at all. But I watched it to the end and he, that was the last one uh, uh, he had won. And it fell in my spirit. He used the analogy that God gave him and that's what fell in my spirit, the analogy. He said, he had Went to the washing machine. He had the clothes on. And he wanted to open up the washing machine. But I don't know about your washing machine, but my washing machine, you can't open it while it's running. It locks. And I have tried to open it while it was running. I want to put something else in there. And it will not open. Unless you unplug it and move the cycles I had to eventually do that but he said that's the way God gave it to him you got to finish where you at you got to let God finish working on you finish cleaning that stuff before you can be elevated to the next cycle and I said oh my God oh my God Oh my God, let God clean you. And see, some of us, I realize, when God started washing, we think, that's enough. I'm going to go on to work now, God. The Lord called me to be a preacher. I'm going to go preach. You're not ready. You're not ready. You're not finished. With the wash cycle. See, some of us are on light and some of us are on heavy. God got work to do. And as soon as we get a little wet, we think, oh yeah, 
I'm finna go now. I'm ready. I, 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 I done, I done, I'm start preaching and I want me a church right now. You got to go through the cycles. And there's a wash. And there's a rinse. And there's a spin. Let me tell you what. That agitator in there. God is working. And when you got them blue jeans in there. I'm some tough fabric. You got to really get to working on that. Let me bring that to the church for you. You come to church. The spirit is high. You accept Christ as your Savior. You come to church Wednesday. You still feeling good. Come back Sunday. And then all of a sudden you need your light be a pain. Lord, I need my light bill. Lord, send somebody to give me my light bill. Anybody at church gave you my light bill, man? I know it wasn't nothing to them folk. I ain't going back over there. That cycle wasn't finished. You done unplugged the washing machine and got out. Patience, y'all. Patience. See, when the Lord is working, when He's doing the washing, he know how many times he need to rinse, how many times he, you know, I, 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 I shampoo and hair. <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing it down to the level where everybody can get it. You shampoo, you put the shampoo on the hair. You rinse it out. Don't put that conditioner on there yet. Check another washer. Shampoo and they, they, you don't wash clothes with your shampoo hair. Shampoo it again and get your fingers in there or get one of them brushes and get that scalp get that dry skin off the scalp that dandruff off the scalp to make sure that hair is clean when it get clean then you put that shampoo on there you can curl it like you want it's ready to go Or, or, or one shampoo and then you get your hair dry and it, your scalp still itchy because you didn't clean it. You didn't stay in there long enough. You rushing. Stop rushing God when he's trying to work on you. It's for your good. When you ask the Lord to wash you, you giving him permission to take you through every cycle. Every cycle. We got to be patient and go through the cycles, y'all. And, and try, to, try to get the top off. That's what I was going to do. Try to make that washing machine open up. I even turn it off and moved it to the spin. And then moved it to it. It wouldn't open. It would not open. And that's the way God, if you're not ready, I, I, I remember my sister was she was in high school trying to learn how to bake a cake. Trying to do home economics. And they had the instructor and she brought a class to my mama's house. She even showed them how to mix up the cake. They put the cake in the oven. And they got the cake out of the oven and the cake wasn't done. And it was pretty brown on the outside. The outside was pretty. We washed the outside. But you got to let the inside get done. Get, get finished. Finish the cycle. Yeah. Cut that cake and don't went to running. It wasn't done. And you know, as children, we left. Because <laughs> they had the instructor there with them. She was telling them what to do. She was embarrassed. But that's the way life is, y'all. When you don't. Wait. Wait on God. Wait till that washing machine says, beep, it's finished. The cycle is finished. And when God finished, He ready to put you to work. He, he is washing the inside. 
He watching the inside. Here you can dress up the outside like you want, but guess what? When that inside is precious, when that inside is happy, when that inside is full of joy, the outside ain't gonna look like no hoe. Y'all act like y'all didn't get it. You ain't got to tame the answer. See, we we, we we looking at people and, and who that dress too short? They ain't the same. Who I can be she wearing that? She ain't saved. She ain't got nothing on the inside to help her dress up outside. You need to be teaching them how to love God. Fall in love with Jesus. <coughs> and that dress is straighten up. It go for the men too, y'all. I can I can use the women dress, you know, because you, you see the two short dresses and all this stuff. But some men be dressing inappropriate too, especially now that they got them ripped jeans and stuff. They wear them ripped jeans too, whatever call them with the holes in my thumb. Yeah, well, whatever they are. But I want you. I, God dropped it in my spirit so heavy. And start dealing with me with that washing machine. Because I had done it. I had tried to open that machine. And I knew it wasn't finished washing because I wanted to put something else in the machine. So it could then wash too. And so that, that told me that your cycle ain't got no business in the same machine with her cycle. But I'm trying to put somebody else. That's what we do. Come on, go with me. Come go to church with me. Come go here with me. Come go to the club with me. Get your own cycle. Work through your own. Because God is separating us. I, you, she can't go to hell for you. She can't go to heaven with you. God been teaching me some things on this. On this. On this cycle. Because I have said. Oh, I got it now. I got it now. Let me go. No. Did he tell you to go yet? When, when God called me into the ministry, it was October. And at that time, he also told me when to start. So when I called a pastor, the pastor said, well, when you want to do it? I said, ain't when I want to do it. It's when God said do it. But he didn't say tomorrow. He didn't say next month. But he gave me a future date. Because he had to do some working. Even Esther had a year preparation before she could go into the kingdom. God had to do a work. And since she didn't have no business going into the king, Esther didn't inherit that. But God prepared her. That's right. And the king to receive her. And when God fell in with you, the king fell in love at first sight. You hear me? When God fell in with you, that's a work. So how about staying in the cycle? Finishing the cycle. And if your wash cycle lasts longer than you think it ought to be, just stay there. Stay there. Stay right there. Until God said, okay, it's time to spin you out now. It's time to let you go. Amen. Lord, you make me clean. So I know when he makes me clean, I will be what he wants me to be, where he wants me to be, doing what he wants me to be. Amen.